The afternoon light was fading. They may have had less than an hour to save Annabeth. They crossed the Golden Gate Bridge, drove through Marin Country, and soon they were right on the doorstep to Mount Tamalpais. The further up the mountain, the thicker the clouds seemed to be. Like I said, the mist is thicker here, Thalia said. We have to be real careful. They started coming out of the forest area and into wide open spaces. Percy could see a clear view of the ocean all the way down to the bottom, and something on the shore caught his eye. A cruise ship? No way it could be a coincidence. That had to be Luke's ship, the Princess Andromeda. We shall expect company from Kronos' army, then, Zoe said. Percy was about to reply, but then the hairs on the back of his neck stood up. Zoe, quick, stop the car, he cried. Stop now! She must have sensed it, too, because she slammed the brakes without question. Quick, get out! Thalia cried. She pulled Percy out, and then, kablooey! The car was blown to bits. You saved my life, Percy said. One shall be perished by a parent's hand, she muttered. That can't be. Why would he? No, Thalia, Percy said. It's Kronos. He's manipulating you. Thanks, Thalia said. Wait, where's Zoe? Percy asked. Zoe? Zoe? She appeared right next to him. Shh! Silence, you fool! She whispered. You don't want to wake Leiden. You mean we're here? He asked. Very close, she said. They continued up the hill on foot, which led to a field of tall grass and flowers, and Percy immediately recognized the place. It was the same garden from his dreams, where Zoe first gave Hercules riptide. Then, a few feet away, was an apple tree with golden apples. They were literally sparkling gold. The apples of immortality, Thalia mentioned. It was Hera's wedding gift to Zeus. Percy wanted to reach up and take one, but then something he didn't notice a minute ago almost made his heart stop. Leiden, the dragon! He almost looked a lot like the Hydra, only thinner, and had a lot more heads. He seemed to be sleeping, being all curled around the tree with all his eyes shut. Then something else caught Percy's eye. Four young women dressed in white, all with caramel skin and dark hair, and they all looked like Zoe. Sisters, Zoe said. You are no sister of ours, Zoe Nightshade, the first sister said coldly. Only an enemy as well as your so-called friends. Be gone. Not without Artemis, Zoe demanded. Annabeth too, Dahlia added. You know he will kill thee if thou shalt dare to try, the first sister warned. He will not hurt me, Zoe said. And what about thy so-called friends, the first sister asked. Then Zoe did the last thing anyone expected. Leiden, awake! The dragon opened all of its eyes, and they all looked straight at Zoe. Are you mad? the eldest sister yelled. You never really had the courage, sister, Zoe taunted. Not like me. Thalia, Percy, go! Zoe shouted. He's trying to guard the tree. As long as he sees me as a threat, he'll be too busy for you. You'll be killed, Thalia said. It's the only way, Zoe said. Not even the three of us together can defeat him. Now go! Thalia and Percy continued running up the hill, and Zoe went closer to the tree. It's me, little dragon, Zoe said. Zoe has come back. I used to feed thee by hand. Do you still like lamb's meat? The dragon lunged at Zoe, but two thousand years of training kept her alive. She dodged a few heads and slid underneath its belly. She was almost out of range, but then another head snapped at her side. She kept sprinting up the mountain and caught up with her friends. When they finally made it to the top, they saw what looked a lot like a big funnel cloud spinning in the center of the ruins of black stone walls, but they didn't feel any strong winds. The ruins of Mount Othrys, Dahlia said. Mount Othrys? Percy asked. 
the fortress of the Titans, Zoe said, sounding weaker. The rival of Olympus. But how can it be here? Percy asked. This is California. The same way Olympus moved over to New York City, Percy, Thalia explained. Don't you remember? The gods prefer to live in the most powerful civilization on Earth, and obviously that would include their enemies. But the fact that this is here is not good. Why? Because it means it's also Atlas's mountain, Zoe said, where he holds up the sky. They walked up the black steps and into the ruins. Seconds later, they stood right in front of where the funnel cloud hung right over the mountain peak. But instead of resting on the shoulders of a titan, the funnel cloud was resting on the shoulders of a young red-headed woman. It was Artemis. This is what Percy had seen in his dreams, only now it had become clear. He hadn't seen Artemis holding up a boulder in a cavern. She was here, forced to hold up the roof of the world. She was sweating real hard, too. Percy never thought a god could look exhausted, but apparently holding up that thing was too much even for Artemis. My lady! Zoe shouted, and she rushed to her mistress. She knelt in front of the goddess, and she looked like she was about to cry. Zoe, you must leave! It's a trap! Artemis warned. Zoe was definitely crying now. She would not dare leave her mistress. Oh, how touching, a deep voice boomed. It was the general, standing in the doorway, with Luke at his side. Luke was dragging Annabeth all tied up and gagged. Behind them was the golden coffin of Kronos, carried by a couple of dragney women. Luke! Thalia snarled. Let her go! That is the general's decision, Thalia, he said. But it's good to see you again. Thalia spat at him in the face. So much for old friends, the general chuckled. And you, Zoe, it's been a long time. How is my little traitor? Wait, Percy said. You're Atlas? The general glanced at him. Even the stupidest of demigods like yourself could have figured that out, boy. Yes, I am. Atlas, the general of the titans and terror of the gods. And soon shall be your doom as soon as I'm done with her first. You're not going to touch Zoe while I'm around, Percy said. This is a family matter, boy, Atlas sneered. Stay out of it. Wait, a family matter? Yes, Zoe said. Didn't you hear him when he called me a traitor? Atlas is my father. Percy can almost see the resemblance with that matching serious expression, only Atlas looked a million times more serious. Please, just let Artemis go, Zoe demanded. Don't worry, Zoe, Atlas said. I won't attempt to keep her here very much longer, according to godly standards. Every one of the gods shall have their turns experiencing my burden once Lord Kronos rules again. Soon, they will all have a very good idea of humility. But all Percy could focus on right now was Annabeth. For some reason, a few locks of her hairs were streaked with gray. That's from holding up the sky, Thalia muttered as if reading his mind. The weight should have killed her. But I don't get it. Why can't Artemis just let go? Percy asked. How little you understand, young one, Atlas laughed. This is where the sky and earth first met, where Oranos and Gaia had first brought forth their children, the Titans. The sky still yearns to embrace the earth, but someone must hold it at bay or the sky could crush this mountain and everything within a hundred leagues. Once one has taken hold of the burden, Atlas continued, there is no escape unless someone is willing to take it from you. He stepped closer to Percy and Thalia and studied them. Hmm, 
So these are the best heroes of the age, eh? Not much of a challenge. Why don't you fight us and find out? Percy said. Have the gods taught you nothing? Atlas asked. As a superior being, I would not dare waste my time fighting a mere mortal directly. To me, you're completely child's play. But Luke, however, is willing to fill in for me. So you're another coward, Percy said. I'll just forget you said that just this once, Alice said. I'm only trying to be fair. As for you, daughter of Zeus, it seems Luke was all wrong about you. I was not, Luke said. He spoke as if every word was painful. Percy would have felt sorry for Luke if it hadn't been for all the terrible things Luke had done. Thalia, this is our chance to bring payback to our fathers, he said. Just call for the Oakfield Taurus and you'll be able to take their throne. We could rule this world together. No, Thalia, Zoe warned. We must fight back. Then Luke raised his hands and a lit bronze bazir appeared. Then the golden coffin began to glow and the mist started to change all around them. It changed the ruins to look like a brand new castle made from fear and shadow. We shall restore Mount Othrys right here, Luke said, and very soon it shall be stronger and greater than Olympus. We shall first start with bringing Camp Half-Blood crumbling down, Luke continued. All we need is your help. My army is making its way up here from the Andromeda. They'll take care of whoever denies our offering. I don't know you anymore, Thalia said with pain in her voice. Yes, you do, he pleaded. Please don't make me, don't make him destroy you. Percy knew there was no time and no escape. They would be overwhelmed as soon as that army reached the top of the hill. He looked at Annabeth, and she was probably thinking the same thing. Then he met Thalia's and Zoe's eyes, and they silently decided it wouldn't be the worst thing to die fighting along with friends. Now! he shouted, and together they charged. Thalia managed to scare away the snake-legged women by opening her shield, and they left the coffin behind. Luke raised his sword, but when it hit her shield, a ball of lightning pushed him away. And Percy, without thinking, did which might have been the stupidest thing in his life. He went for Atlas. Percy, beware! Zoe warned. He knew what she meant. Chiron had told him long ago that immortals are constrained by ancient rules, but a hero can go anywhere and challenge anyone as long as they had the nerve. Just knowing that, and choosing to fight Atlas, Atlas would be free to attack Percy with all his might. Percy ran toward him, but then Atlas flicked him with the butt of his javelin. He flew through the air and slammed into the black walls, which were no longer missed. Foolish boy, Atlas said. Do you think just because you survived a fight with that pity war god, you could stand up to me? He hit him again, and sending him flying and landing in front of Artemis. Rod boy, you must run, she told him. Atlas was taking his time walking towards Percy. Atlas was between him and his sword now. It wouldn't have reappeared in his pocket again in time, and circling would be risky. Thalia and Luke were fighting each other like demons. Annabeth was on the ground, still struggling to get free. Then, Atlas finally stood arm length with Percy as he remained on the ground, and raised his javelin to end him. Time to die, little hero, he said. No, you don't, Zoe growled. She shot three silver arrows right in his butt. Grrr, the titan bellowed. Then he turned towards his daughter. <laughs>